Hey everyone, Sketch Card Hive here with two amazing people. Some of my favorite people in the hobby, actually. Tony and Elaine Perna. How are you both? Good. How are you, buddy? <laughs> Good, buddies. Oh, uh, yay! Um, so people don't know a lot of people know people who are in the know know, and people who are new might not know, which is another reason why I need to have you guys on here. You guys were on Last Pack Magic, Marvel Card Podcast. You guys have been around big members of the community. But what I don't think people understand is kind of a little bit that both of you are artists and that both of you have been around for a good time and know a lot of things that a lot of people are unaware of. Uh, personally, your collections, of course, and kind of where the hobby's gone, your perspective. I'm, I'm interested because for me as a character collector, Elaine was kind of one of my mentors. Uh, she doesn't know this. She's going to get shy. She doesn't really know this. Um, but in Lane, and Tony comes into this funny enough, but in Lane's collection was one of the collections I modeled my collection after. Um, oh, so for nice. a long time. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and for a long time. And then on Blowout Forms is when I found out about Tony, because Tony is, people don't understand how historical Tony Perna sketch cards are for Marvel. And of course, Elaine then comes in and it's just an amazing team. And they make something called Perna Studios. And we're going to fast forward to that a little bit towards the end. And it's freaking awesome. Uh, and I don't collect outside of Surfer. And I went a little too crazy on this because I'm a huge fan of what they did. Um, so we're going to talk about that. True Blue, my buddy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's awesome. Um, so... We're going to get into this. So let's do introductions. Let everybody know who you guys are. So Tony and Lane, whoever wants to go first, give me just who you are. And then after that, how did you get into this crazy hobby? Do you want to go first? Because they're, they're probably tired of hearing me. Uh, <laughs> um, I have no idea where to start. Um, I, I think I started collecting cards in 1994. I remember going to... Wawa shops in New Jersey and buying packs of the Hillbrint sketches off the counter there. <laughs> and that had started it. That and an, um, this little boy that I babysat, he, uh, well, he was like 12, but he was getting in the trading cards and he had the 1994 Fleer Ultra X-Men. I fell in love with his card set. I had to go out and buy that too. <laughs> so that started my card collection. But, um, but I've always loved X-Men. Rogue's been my favorite character i've been collecting anything of her for about 20 years now <laughs> anything that i can afford <laughs> but trading cards i went gung-ho in the 90s and early 2000s i tried to find any and every card i didn't care she was teeny tiny in the background i had to have the cards with her on it but then it started to get harder to become a completist when upper deck uh, has all these number parallel so i can't be a completist anymore but i have a big collection <laughs> oh you have an amazing people don't even know <laughs> elaine's collection is it's legendary i don't i'm trying to underplay it because i don't want to embarrass her um i don't i don't know how you guys don't get high off your own supply like with tony and you guys both being artists and i've seen both of your sketch cards and i love them both um <laughs> I don't know how you guys don't like, cause I can't, I can draw, but I draw to my satisfaction, but not to like, no one would love my work. Like it's just work that I like to do for me, like storyboarding for film and stuff. Cause just, right. that's my background. And, and I enjoy the, 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 the work in drawing cause it's meditative. It's nice. Um, but it always cracks me out. Cause I always see you guys. And I'm like, people don't know, like you're already badass artists and legendary, but like people don't even know, like, Anyway, so I'm not going to spoil it. Um, I'm so excited for everybody. T-Bear is going to crack up. Hermit's going to freak out. It's going to be a great episode. So, Tony, please lay us a little bit about you. You're amazing. You're always around the community. People know you. People talk about you. But I just love to hear you introduce People talk yourself. about me. Yes, they do. <laughs> Um, <laughs> probably not in a good way no um, no i talk about tony in a good way. um i would think that my very first set into collecting was uh okay big comic book fan since i was a wee lad five six years old <laughs> um <laughs> wee so lad. uh wee lad. i was always into the comics and the comic uh and i was always into drawing and then the, the drawing the comics like trying to uh mimic and imitate uh my heroes like George Perez, John Byrne at the time. Uh, that's that's what really got me into it. 
Uh, then the cards, uh, I think my very first set was the the Jim Lee 1992 or 91 uh, X-Men set. So, yeah, um, that was my first foray into to actually starting to, to collect them. And, and yeah, it does get addictive. It really does. <laughs> it does. Just um, a little. Just a little bit. bit. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it, it, from there it went on to uh, Joe Jusco's Marvel masterpieces and uh, uh, X Men, X Men Fleer, Fleer Ultra X Men. After yeah. that, and uh, Beginnings Universe. I mean, I just started started collecting them all. I've kind of backed away from from actual buying boxes and stuff because things have just got a little too treasure. And uh, <laughs> that's a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what kind of brought me into like it was always I was always going to be drawing regardless. Um, the fact that I landed on drawing something that I loved as a kid and loved as an adult growing up, but comic book characters have always been, you know, I always refer to it as today's modern mythology, like the Greeks mythology and, and you know uh, Norse and all that. Well, this is our mythology for our generation, so it's always been a big, uh, uh, a big you know, support for me to do that and create creatively, it's a great outlet for it. So yeah, it's like the kind of, it meshed together really good. I love it. I remember us talking on the podcast and you, we talking about alpha flight and we're talking about real Wolverine, like small nitty gritty Wolverine. And I remember all those amazing conversations. And I think back to all the things I've seen you work on and between you and Warren, like, I mean, especially you, no one has, I want to say this right, because it's worth saying correctly. Your level of narration and story and sketch cards is unparalleled. Like it is just intensely, not only because like anyone can research, and people like, oh, here's the reference, here's this, blah, 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 blah. But yeah. I've, literally, I've literally seen you do things that only a comic book person would know and I've seen you insert them in the back of the cards. I've seen that that story building and referencing, and I don't think anyone else has done it even remotely as good and well done as you. Seriously, it, it's funny that you mentioned that because I did want to get into comics. I, you know, that would have been a, a an amazing fulfillment in my life to actually draw comics professionally. But with the sketch cards, that's what I do. I kind of tell the story in my cards. I always want to have something going on. Which is what I use. I use. Uh, I call them props for the characters. But when you do like backgrounds and cars and people reacting, I mean that's props for the character to help build an entire scene. And and it's always been the way I I've, I've been. You know, like well, at least not in the very beginning because my first foray into sketch cards, uh, Complete Avengers, I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know what was expected of me. So I kind of did the whole repeat card, repeat character. I mean, that was all it was back in the day. I mean, that wasn't something yeah. that you pulled out of nowhere. That was literally, I mean, Silver Age, right? Fleer Ultra, uh, Fleer Ultra Spider-Man 97. That's all rinse and repeat stuff. Like MCC 98 did a little bit of it too. Like it makes total sense that that was the, 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 the instinct. Yeah, and even like doing the portrait. I used to do portrait uh, like yeah. head sketches on, on the sketch cards, and I kind of got away from it because I wanted it to be a little more interesting. I wanted to be that guy that kind of stood out when you, you saw the sketch card and you said, oh, that's a Perna. Immediately. Right both both for you and Elaine. It's yeah. funny because like working at CGC, I always have people sending me cards there. They're like, hey, they didn't know the artist. And I'm like, Elaine. I'm like, Tony. And it's just so funny. <laughs> it's immediate. And I think... For me, my favorite sketch card artists have that ability. You know what I mean? Like an artist, period. Is that like yeah. when I see someone's work, I want to see their take on the world, on the hero. I don't want to see someone else's homage. I mean, homages are great. They're phenomenal. Yes. But yes. like I don't want to see I, – I want, I want that identity to be kind of established in the piece. Exactly. And, I, exactly. and I think – and I think that's why it's going to be funny to watch people come to Marvel cards in the future and now um, as they come in and people pour in with new sets all the time. But I think people are always going to look back and be like, man, there's Perna. You know what I mean? Like I always think people are going to look back at both of you and see that. And then also, and when we get to Perna Studios, I think that that's the other major reason because all these other companies can learn from you guys. You did it right. 
Like oh they goodness. they knew how to do sketch cards and they knew how to put a set together because Perna Studio sets. And this is not me like, oh, Fausto being over here excited. This is me saying legit. <laughs> they figured it out. They understand how to do it. And it works really well. And we'll show you guys what that, that process is like. And I'm interested to hear about this. Dre, what's up, man? Uh, uh, <laughs> I love it. Who's the weird dude sitting next to the lane? <laughs> uh, I collect the blob. Oh, you collect the blob? Uh, we used to have an amazing blob collector yeah. who passed away. Who? So I'm so glad you're carrying the mantle. You come from, you come from good blood, buddy. Uh, our friend who passed away, he was an amazing blob collector. And we'll talk a little bit about that character, character collecting aspect, which will kind of lead into seeing a little bit of Elaine's collection, which I'm scared to show people because I don't think they're going to be able to handle it. Um, but a lot of boxes. <laughs> so we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see some stuff. Yeah. I can't even, if you look at my collection compared to her collection, mine's not a collection. I, Mine is just a little dabble. Hers is, I don't put my cards in binders because I'm so afraid of damaging them or the top getting a little bit of like yeah. coloration over time, even though we're non-smokers and stuff like that. So I keep every single card in top loader. So it's a lot of boxes. Over there. That's what's up. <laughs> See, that's how you know. Mm. See, you hear that kind of talk. And Tony and Lane, they know what they're doing. They really know what they're doing. Well, um, preservation, man. If, if, well, if, if you want to keep clean, the stuff, yeah, yeah, you want to keep the stuff you want for as long as you can, you know, keep it Top around. Top loaders, team bags, and put them in, and then into a storage box, and then in the closet, they get no dust. And in the same, no smoke. Shut off on a rocket to yep. another planet. They're it's just <laughs> good room temperatures at all times. <laughs> Create a telepathic connection to your collection so you can see it in your mind, but not share with anybody. Totally makes yeah. sense. Exactly. I get it. I get it. Uh, this is the only reason I went to binders is because of the top loader binders. Otherwise, I never would have touched a binder in my life um, because the rings like freak me out. The ring marks or the discoloration because I've I seen some horrible things. Because I didn't use D ring binders when I used to collect them and put them in binders in the 90s and early 2000s. And I've had those cards that get right up to them, get pressed. And I, I had to go, okay, I need number 22 from this set because mine's damaged. Does anybody have one? Yeah. <laughs> you know? so I've had no, I think times. We've all been there with that. I think <laughs> it's always really smart to stay away from ring binders. I mean, it's nostalgic for sure. It's but a dirt wood binder. If you get D rings, usually you don't have a problem with that. No, because of the round all the way around. Yeah. That Definitely. circle such a killer. Yeah. It is. That's what will kill the pages. That's what will kill the pages. So D rings when we make binders for the Perna Studio sets, it's all D rings. <laughs> so no, nobody gets sketch cards damaged or base cards later. Yeah, they're <laughs> way it, doesn't, it doesn't bulge into. They into made this. <laughs> they made this. Who makes binders? These guys With make a it. ton of gorgeous <laughs> art from our artists. They made it. <laughs> but how smart is that? I mean, like. Good stuff. Anyway, I don't want to skip ahead. Okay, so let's get into this a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna preference this and give people a little bit of uh, context here. Character collecting, if I'm not mistaken. Now I have to keep quiet for a lot of this because Elaine and Tony know more than me. Um, when it comes to character collecting, yes. When it comes to character collecting, character collecting really started with the sketch cards from '97, '98. So that was really when I was, I was at work. My mother got me a job at Dick County Schools. Uh, lovely woman. She got me to work over there. I, I don't remember how old I was or high school or whatever, but I came across sketchographs. Mm -hmm. And yes, they were the first I, yes, and I was hooked. I printed out all the surfer ones. I eventually got the cards I printed out when I was a kid. No joke. I'm not even kidding. That's like, so cool. It's so, no, it's so stupid. No, it's so cool though. No, this that's, is so stupid. It's not stupid. That's, that's good. <laughs> Actually, do you remember when I worked at the photo lab and I took all the trading cards or the road cards I liked, printed them out four by six? It's not you a- Don't say that live. That's a criminal thing. That's not a criminal thing. It's just for myself, not for sales. Same. I put I put them in my binder. I hide them in my yeah. It's just for yeah, me. It's in the photo yeah. album. I <laughs> traded one sketch graph. 
because I was so in love with this stupid card. And I had done this for like, like I was building the surfer collection back there. I have like eBay receipts of me picking out cards. And like, these were the two, these were two cards that I had seen when I was on the websites. Oh, that's cool. And these are, these MCC 98, I barely show these. I never show these, but I love you guys. Those are great. Yeah, I love that. I like that Dia Dada. <laughs> so, wait, is that Iceman on the one side? <laughs> Sorry, oh, my finger slipped. Did you see that? That's so weird. Anyway, um, oh my goodness. So, these, these are amazing. And I saw these. These were some of the first cards I ever saw that were sketch cards. I uh, have is that a collecting well? sticker? Yes. My friend Rhonda who started the collection. She's a huge Gambit collector. <laughs> She's a killer. I don't know this woman. I've never met her. Cards. And if she... it wasn't for her, I would not have met Tony. No, I didn't know that. It's the yeah. reason I met Tony. Back in the day. She's to blame. Back in the day, I wanted new art. And she goes, well, you can just commission an artist. And I go, this is like 1999. I go, I don't know how to do it. She goes, well, on eBay, there's some sellers, Warren Martinick, Tony Perna, TGK. There was a few other sketch card artists. I commissioned everybody for Rogue. <laughs> I just hit them all up on eBay. And then Tony, I wanted a larger piece and I wanted Age of Apocalypse Rogue. And he did two. And he goes, well, which one do you like the most? So I picked one and I bought that. But then he finished the other one and put it on eBay and I had to buy that too. <laughs> And then he started stalking me. <laughs> That's my boy. That's how it does. That's what's up. Good job. I guess I liked it. So I kept talking to him. <laughs> but that is how we met. It was eBay and Rhonda. <laughs> this channel does not support stalkers at all. This is a nice story. Okay. This is usually not how it works out. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> glad I kind of spied on her and see what she was into because that's when you can go and see what sellers are bidding on and that back then. You can actually check what and, bidders used to yeah, buy. Yeah, so she was into the whole tarot stuff, witches and, and, and fantasy stuff. And I was like, How did you know that? I was like, Ooh. That's, that's this woman. That's the woman for me. I love that so much. That's yes. amazing. Because <laughs> everything I used to buy back then was either tarot cards, rogue, or like. Pendulums, but that's all I bought. That's a good list. I respect that list. I respect and, uh, that. Yeah, that's how I'm at. <laughs> see, I love that though. Like, see, that to me is just it's a crazy it shows story. you how small this world is. A um it is. it's pretty crazy. That's so nuts. I was looking at this stuff around okay. She's the first girlfriend who actually was into the same stuff as me. And I mean, I wasn't looking for somebody at the time and she kind of just fell into my lap and we had so much in common. It was amazing, you know, and. And you love the X-Men. 20 years my later, favorite. <laughs> 20 years later, we're still together. And the X-Men, I had lots of X-Men comics, the cartoons, everything. Yeah, I took them Action all. figures. <laughs> yeah, I took them all. And he liked X-Men and that as long as he liked art and X-Men, I was happy and cards and he did. So it was perfect for me. You know, I mean, that's how Probably you know, awesome. like. That's how you know. I remember, I mean, Emily and I are the same way. We like so many things and we gelled immediately. You just know, you know what I mean? You just, you, if you're lucky enough and it is, and it is luck because it's very hard, but it's awesome. That, I'm so happy to hear that because I always think about you guys. I always tell Emily about you guys. I'm like, if we ever go near, in your neck of the woods, we have to drop in and say hi. Oh yeah. Um, we'll take you to the Niagara Falls. We'll take you, oh, we'll take you around. It's so nice yeah. around here. We're, yeah, trust me. I'm yeah, dying. We'll take you to Tim Hortons. Yeah, just to get some coffee and just some to... donuts. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Comments. Whoops. Sorry. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Getting excited. Circle of Life. What if Alison Perna Studios? What's up? <laughs> Teep. I love it. They're all. Hey, friends. Matt. Hey, Gambit Collector. Great guy. Oh, there you go. He is. He Matt is. He is. Matt and my friend Rhonda would get along great. <laughs> Matt, Matt is such a sweet man. I, he's been showing me his collection. He went. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Over, he's really collecting oh, gear. <laughs> and I showed him. I showed him Rhonda's collection. Oh, and no joke, I said to him because on calf, I showed him comment, and I told him I was like, "Look, I'm going to be real honest with you. This is going to depress you." Okay, but just understand, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of good stuff here that you can admire 
<laughs> and dream about one day. Um, so it's going to be, pretty, it was pretty <laughs> funny. This is going to depress you. I feel like that's what happens. So any, so, okay, let's get into your row collection. Let's get into Tony's. So do you do Wolverine or you do like what you like? Cause I know you have a collection and we haven't gotten into it, into it. My, my main character is Wolverine. Right. 100%. 100% Wolverine. Um, there are some second string characters that I like, like sometimes, uh, uh, Namor. I'll collect, but really it goes Wolverine, Taskmaster, Namor, and then you kind of throw in different ones like uh, Saber Tooth, Sa Alpha Flight, yeah, Saber Tooth, Gladiator Alpha. from the Imperial Guard, that, but oh. but it's definitely like Wolverine's number one, and then uh, Taskmaster's number two. I'm Taskmaster is a good character, man. That's a that's it's weird. People don't look at that character a lot. That's a that's a bit of a mistake. He has a great aesthetic. I love the character. I love the character. You it's know, he's always been interesting when George Perez first drew him on the cover of Avengers there in his first appearance. I mean, he was a kick ass character. Yeah. yeah. That's so true. Okay, that's good to know. I was wondering because I knew you dabbled, but I knew Wolverine was the main PC. But I wasn't sure how far you went into like anything else. You yeah, I, I just mean? think is with, with Platinum, um, you know, like how Matt Fuller had the, the buy ins for the, the characters when he was opening yeah. up. Uh, platinum, but but somebody beat me to the Wolverine, so <laughs> so I picked Taskmaster. <laughs> and so I got a few cards coming my way, but you know I, I get people that were kind enough to in trades they they picked up some platinum for me. Yes. So you know I'm very happy. So and I got a few more coming in, and I have to get me some rogues. I saw Marvel Anime you know, 2 is on EPAC now, just, so I can a, go shopping. There's a lot of good people in the community that like helping each other out, you know. A 1,000%. Yeah, and, you know, I got to th thank them for that because, you know, without them, I, I didn't collect anybody. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. It's true. I, it's without, too expensive. Without other collectors, I wouldn't have as many cards as I've had. I've done lots of trades over the years, so, I mean, that's what it should be. It should be people helping out each other. Really it really should be community based. I mean, I don't think people realize like there's no way I would have had what I've had if I hadn't met good people along the way. Like there's just no, it's just not possible. Yeah, I believe that. I totally yeah. believe that. And there's just no way. Hard talk and, and scoundrel it used to be the best places to trade and do everything. And, but now it's NSU card talk and blowout cards. <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting a little bit, but those are good places to trade. And stuff. Some people went nuts. Some people went nuts. Well, it's <laughs> funny because, like, Another I feel thing. like <laughs> there was like email Yahoo groups, scoundrel blowout, yeah. Facebook groups, and now it's like kind of Discord, kind of Insta, a little bit of Facebook groups still. Yeah. But way back in the day, used to be Yahoo groups as well. But... Yahoo groups. I heard back, about these emails. That's why I used you to have <laughs> my Zig Rogue website was there for a long time. Like ancient history. I was wondering about that. One, I mean, I used to put pictures of anything, merchandise, pens, clothing, anything I wrote on it. Every image. I used to track down every comic book cover, everything. <laughs> See, but this I, is this is this is what I'm about. This is what it is. Them. Then Yahoo canceled the group, so <laughs> I lost it. Oh, Bonnie boy, that's awesome! If you're if you're serious. Ooh. Eddie Wagner's here. There's some artist here. here. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. I insulted I'm Fausto. Oh no, he's gone. I'm here. I'm here. You just, just have to tell him he's sexy, and then he comes back. I have stuff here. I got to send you guys three times. Fausto. Fausto. Oh, there he is. I still have a giant picture. Of, I still have a giant box of things I have to send you guys. I just haven't done it, but I have. I keep filling it up with stuff. But yeah, I have stuff for you here, Tony. I got stuff. I got, think I got a rogue here too. Just wants food. Is it food? It's always. It's, <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> it's like food. Give me food. I like uh, cards. Food. Cards, are, cards are not forever. Food are forever. Food. 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 Yeah, I'll put it together. Um, <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, let me stop doing this because I'm terrible. I get into the cards thing. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's talk about sketch cards a little bit. Oh, okay then. Um, so since you said sketch cards, this box here is all it is is rogue sketch cards over the years. 
Uh, everything from... Oh, here's one of mine. I bought back one of my sketch cards. <laughs> you never see that outfit on Rogue. That is nope, so I badass. I saw, I saw it for sale on eBay, and I said, I have to have it back. Yeah, I have cards in here. Oh, f come on. MCC 98. I Wait, like so that's the artist. That's the artist of the surfer I've been wanting my whole Renato. life. Oh, that's, um, is that Renato? No. R Renato. Yes. Yeah, it is Renato. Arlen, uh, yeah. Arlen Renato, yep. Actually, I might have. God, that's so good. Oh, you got one of these ones. Oh, that's beautiful. You watch the glare. Oh, I know. Well, it's because they're in team bags. <laughs> I, just, I have so many cards. Everything from Women of Marvel One, Upper Deck. You don't have to show anything you don't want to show. I'm just, I'm just trying to give people <laughs> a little bit of a. So many, but I just there is so many. Maybe we'll show some of this. Perfect. I don't that's know how exactly. to really. That's what I want to see. Like... You're not wearing the tassels I asked for, but whatever. We're just gonna move on. I don't know how to display those double cards very much. The hinge cards. <laughs> so I have so many, but I don't know how to display them. I want to They're hard them. to display. Um, all right, let me look for the thick topplers. So thick, thick topplers, like this one's like Alice is so, and there's two. Oh. Um, then I have those those upper deck panel cards. I'm not sure how to. Sh upper deck panel cards? You know, the hinge cards that they open up. Oh, wait a minute. Who did that? Um, That's beautiful. I am actually not sure. It would be on my website. It's Pina Rodriguez. Oh, there's more on the inside. So the hinge cards are hard to, to showcase. There's no artist name on that. That, that is so right good. Here. Ian, that's what it's it is. Ian. Oh, Ian Corante. Ian Q. Yeah, I don't know. I always love that. That's a great profile on the front. That's really good. Yeah, I really I see things like these and I have to have them. <laughs> if I can afford it, I'll get the rogues. Um lately I haven't been able to really afford them so much because the upper deck cards are getting more pricey. So I just wind up crying and seeing them all on eBay. Yeah, but, but people don't I might buy one for me once in a while for Christmas or my birthday. Mm -hmm. And what you want me to show yours? No, don't show mine. Show them some more cards. Oh okay. yeah, you show me whatever you want. I know. Oh, uh, oh, I have a Chung Surfer. Yes. You have a Chung Surfer? Cool. Yeah. Have I never shown you a Chung Surfer? I think I That's have the Chung so Surfer. Cool. I got the Chung Surfer. Jimmy's actually a really nice guy. Oh, where'd he go? He disappeared again. Uh, did, he, did he disappear? Wait, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I actually here. probably have Eddie Wagner ones in here, too. From, from Where's my Chung? <laughs> nice. Oh, who did that I road? like that Chung. Oh, that's so cool. Look at the background, too. <laughs> Love Jimmy stuff. So good. It's amazing. I think it's Women amazing. of Marvel is my favorite card set. Just because there are so many rogues. I was oh, going to ask you about that. I, Which one one not... <sighs> I got one of his back. That's so good. How did she get that? <laughs> um, A friend of mine, Alicia, she pulled it. And then uh, she sent it to me. I was shocked. And then I was going to go pay for it. And she wouldn't accept any payment for it. <laughs> so, so sweet. So I was have, so happy. All nice people. I was so happy. Sometimes uh, Jeff Schlitt, he goes by Activity Doctor. He sends me cards once in a while, Silver Banshees, because she's my favorite DC comic that's character. Who's that? Who did that one? Oh, that's uh, Fabian Quintero. Oh, wow. That came out nice. Yeah, I saw it on eBay. and It was on a Black Panther card stock. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> I like good. That's probably one of my, my best painted cards. But then I also have... This is where it gets crazy. So the sketch. So people don't know <laughs> this. Is where I have my oversized APs. I do that. <laughs> oh my god! And they're all on top loaders too. Oversized top loaders because they will not get down. Ah, oh, Toma. I love Toma. Andrew's amazing. My I love Toma. I have to thank her so much. Oh, this look at that great. one! Holy what? crap! Who's that? Which one? The Arlie. Ar Arlie Tucker. Uh huh. That, oh, that one's Arlie Tucker. And the other one's Jury. Jury, I knew it was Jury. Okay, I was like, it's on the tip of my tongue. Oh, and oh. Linda Henderson and Arlie Tucker. So people don't know this, and I try not to cuss on the channel, but oh my God, Lori. Huh. That's a Joe Rubenstein, believe it or not. No! What? He first did it. Um, 
I asked for the painted style he does, and he did a, a like yeah, he did a quick <laughs> he did a quick sketch like that. And I told him that's not exactly what I wanted. I I requested painted style, so he did another. Yeah, one. yeah, because like he's I it's mean he's legendary. To get painted style. No kidding. I also collect my other X Men. Oh, f so stuff. here's the thing about me that you guys should know, and Tony knows this. I cuss anytime I'm really impressed by anything. <laughs> yes. All the time. I'm like him for time, doing though. that or her for doing that and art. My second favorite character, Deathbird. I don't want to hear you talk about Deathbird because the Deathbird. Uh, I, think, I think, well, her collection is not as big as Rose, but it's getting there. <laughs> no, it's nice. See, here's the thing that people don't realize, and, and I know I'm not shit talking to anybody. I'd rather have this collection than a collection of one of ones in the sense that. I know what Elaine has and there's so much history with the artists and stuff like that yeah. and the artists that drew these characters. So I know what these, it's very different when you have a sketch card artist, you know, that that's there that had some connection to the character or has some connection through the history of Marvel or care, anything of that nature. It's, it's just a different level of collecting. It's one that, you know, I, I did the Silver Surfer collection because I just love the character. And I want to hear you tell me about Rogue and why Rogue's so important to you and why you like her so much. And I, I want to hear about Wolverine because I think that's always an important segment on this channel for me is to hear you guys kind of have those conversations because I want people to hear. Because, like, it, it's very – you have to be kind of like – you have to really know the character to pick up the good stuff. And I know Elaine picks up the good stuff, and I know Tony gets the good stuff. So I, I kind of want to hear. I think a little I bit like Rogue for the same reason everybody else does. How vulnerable she was. She, you know, she couldn't touch anybody. She couldn't love anyone. But you know, she she was evil at first, but she redeemed herself. She became good. She took Ms. Marvel's powers. So she was just a powerhouse. She was sassy. No, no. She was fun. <laughs> I think that's pretty much like it's pretty much what everybody else will say about Rogue. Yeah, <laughs> what drew them in this very vulnerable character. She's such a wonderful character, I, and I she her. has such a beautiful personality. And like, she's so like I, I. She was the aesthetic. You know what I mean? You watch X Men. You read Jim Lee X Men. You you just do anything with X Men. You see that hair. You see that leather jacket. And for me, let's like. That's X Men. Like for me, she's. It's so crazy how her costume just says X Men. I think that's awesome. I, know. I totally agree with you, and and I'm so disappointed in what they did with her in the with the movies. Yeah, she yeah, such a shame. I get, I get making her like the young, new X Men character, but it's just her character so strong and sassy to have her mousy and then get there. Like yeah. it's just not. I don't know. It just it didn't click. It's unfortunate because the actress from True Blood is not a terrible actress yeah, at all. Yeah, Anna Paquin would have been either, yeah, And I loved perfect. Anna Paquin, but yeah. I wanted to see I wanted to see a stronger, tougher rogue. I thought maybe after the first two movies, she would have just started kicking butt in the third one. Yeah. <laughs> I expected her. I expected the arch for her character to immediately go from like the beginning the the beginning of the first movie. And the, it gets to the end of the second movie. Like I expected her to defeat Magneto because she is the main character of the X Men movie. She, yeah. it's not Logan, it's not anybody. Like it's supposed to be Rogue, and yeah. they kind of force her into the back seat a little bit because it becomes like their first outing, Storm, Cyclops, and they're all fantastic. But I, I expected her to have the turn, you know, the big arc. But yeah. it just never. They made her fall in love with Iceman, and then she became more of an adolescent, even more of an adolescent. But that wasn't the great part about Rogue. The great part about Rogue is that she had to grow up so fast and she's had to reason with this stuff and she's yeah. developed a shield and she's developed this personality. And that was so cool to get that at that point in the story. I don't know. It was, it was, it was, I get it, but it was, it was a misstep. It never clicked. Yeah. I kind of wish they wouldn't have uh, continued with the whole damsel in distress thing with her. I wanted to see and her always screaming, get kind of always fed needs up help, but it's like <laughs> she she literally could be one of the most powerful X Men. She yeah. is one of the most powerful, in my opinion, she's one of the most powerful mutants. Like, yeah. and and they kind of dropped the ball. And now, hopefully, with this whole revamp of the the mutant universe with the MCU, they do her right. I'm really hoping to see her a bit more tougher, and yeah, just because she was flirty. Remember her whole 
her whole thing was she liked giving the kiss when she yeah. stole the powers. She did. Remember when she kissed Mephisto? She kissed Mephisto. She, she kissed the juggernaut. She kissed them like. Just it was them. great because like. I should. <laughs> so good, right? Because. <laughs> and it's such a good idea for a character that can't touch anyone for her to be flirty because it brings out this kind of like, I'm going to regain this power back that I can't have. Right. Exactly. That was smart. You know what exactly. I mean? That was a smart decision. But like the movie just never, it never it decided never to do it. I don't know why. This is a no. mistake. You need to fix it. They like, this is their chance now with the MCU kind of getting the characters more accurate to what they are in the comics. Uh, let's hope that. Or at least getting to their core. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. Make the character act like the character is supposed to act. Regardless because of the core of the character. Yeah. Right. 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 Exactly. exactly. Yeah. The myth, the mythology of it. If you can't get to the core of them, you can't get to the mythology if you can't get to the core of the character. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. exactly. And people, friends of mine who are not familiar with the comics, they would always ask me, why is that real character such a weenie in the movies? Like, <laughs> why? Like, like what's We're the whole point that. of her? And I'm like, you know what? She's not like that in the comics. She's actually kick-ass in the comics. Yeah. I mean, she could she'd literally pick up a tank and throw it yes, at you. Yes, she would. I don't know why they did that. I used to but. love things like that. Oh, it's so cool. It's I think... That's what Dan's piece is, right? Dan did the tank throw in MM22? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's rogue. Yes, I think you're right. Yes, yeah. Yes. I got something here for you, Elaine. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm I scared. Wasn't, I, wasn't gonna, I, wasn't I could burn your underwear. <laughs> did you see my underwear? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, Lord. You guys are so saucy. <laughs> <laughs> So saucy. That's why you want you to come up to Canada, man. So saucy. You'll have a good time. <laughs> oh, so I got this sign for Canadian you. Saucy. Oh. <laughs> and I've been holding it for you because the box is expensive to send over to uh, Canada. But <laughs> you're just gonna drive it up? Is, is it big? <gasps> oh. oh my goodness! Now is that is that hand signed by Dan? Yeah. Beautiful, nice. amazing! Oh my god, thank you. I definitely do not have a signed one. Yeah, that's awesome. he had this just happened last weekend because he had oh, an extra, yeah. and I was like, "Let me get this for Elaine." He was like, "Of course." Thank like, you so oh, much. That's awesome. Yeah, you're so nice. I'm so happy. No, my yeah. turn. Yeah. yeah, I have something for you here. It ain't Wolverine because I can't get a hold of one, but I have something here for you. But do you have that? No, I don't. I'm happy when I get rogue cards at all. I'm <laughs> just so happy. It's gonna be good. Ask actually. Actually, 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 there is a taskmaster. Ah, it didn't come out. They didn't. There is a taskmaster in this. I'm going to get you a taskmaster sign unless I pull a Wolverine. <laughs> you know what, man? I'm happy. Thank you. That, that's <laughs> um, what else? Okay. So character collecting sense. Boom. Talk to me about your collection a little bit, Tony. Yes. I don't have a collection. <laughs> you lie. You lie. This is what you get with the OG. They don't tell you everything. I can see it. He's like, oh, I don't have a collection. And the horns go up. I can feel it. Uh, my my fascination with Wolverine started uh, mid-80s, I guess. Um, so artwork was our best. Uh, some of the first stuff I would collect. Even drawing the character. Um, and... And then, uh, yeah, then it started with the cards, uh, action figures, statues, so sock, and socks. I have Wolverine socks. So There's a silver different the necktie I still don't have on from eBay that I keep thinking about getting. So I get it. Do it, do it, man. I'm, I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, just the Wolverine claws, the metal claws I've got. Um, got a little carried away with that, but uh, that's awesome. It, if I could fit a surfboard in here that was silver, you'd watch me do it. Oh, I know you would. I know, you know I, I would. It'd be right in the corner of the room. Do you surf? No, no, <laughs> I don't need to. I don't I need to, to surf. Be a surfboard, buy some chrome spray paint and just chrome it up, let it oh. air out for a few days, put it in your house. But just don't spray yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna be like those guys from Mad Max, <laughs> the holla, and I'm just gonna go. No, <laughs> well, Norrin's dead. No one died. That was that was fast. Someone but suggested that he'd make his own surfboard and and it. <laughs> He didn't make it. Uh, but yeah, then it started with the uh, the comics. I've 
always collected Wolverine comics. I mean, uh, Uncanny X Men. I think my I have one thirty two of Uncanny and up, and I'm trying to fill in gaps from my uh, previous to that. So that's um, crazy yeah, um, awesome. Oh, I was like totally into to and the reason why a uh, Wolverine is growing up. I was kind of the runt in my family and Wolverine was this little guy who wouldn't back down from anybody. Wasn't the best looking guy. Wasn't the tallest looking guy, but he was a badass. Like, a like his first, like his first appearance he takes on the Hulk and the Wendigo. Yeah, baby. You know? So I was like, this character is freaking wild. Like, I, I got to know more about him, and then I just got an obsession with him. When you found out he was Canadian, yeah, and then when he was Canadian, he's from Canada, yes. and I was like, "Yep, see, there you go." And I was like, "That's it, meant to be." Down the street, but he doesn't. <laughs> uh... Sorry, tiny British Columbia. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> but he's always, and that's why when you see me draw Wolverine, you always see me draw Wolverine more accurate to what he's supposed to be in the comics. Five foot three, not six foot two. No, it's awesome. I think you did a Weapon X Wolverine. You've done a few, but there was one. It was X Men Arc. I'm trying to remember what it was, but I saw yeah, that's, Wolverine. That's, that's the bad one. Was that the one with the testicles showing? No. Yeah, that's the bad one. <laughs> that's not the bad one. Mm -hmm. From X Men Archive, is that the one I'm thinking of? No, it was the. Wasn't it Wolverine? It was Wolverine Origins that I did that one. You did a great Weapon X, and yeah, I'm trying to yeah, remember. Green Origins, it was, but that's. Fine. I have my Christmas card where the animals are poor suckers. Uh, we'll talk about that on the show another time. So this is this is a terrible live. I should have pre-recorded this second release. Gotta, gotta be good. <laughs> but here we go. Be good. Uh, <laughs> this will be not for children. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> lost all my no more followers came in. You sick bunch of Marvel card collectors out there. <laughs> If if the Wolverine you're talking about is is him in the Weapon X, kind of, and there's a log in front of him. No, this one it's like some kind of oh the log yeah I know the log I remember the log story you told me. <laughs> Tony's a sick he's he's amazing. He's not all there. I'm not sick. I just know <laughs> he's not all there. He's not. He's not all not. there. I mean it's it's weird that I figured that out and I married him so. <laughs> no backseat. Three of us are problematic no on this channel right yeah. now. No backseat. <laughs> <laughs> but okay so amazing good i'm glad we got it out there we talked about some amazing things with your collections um what are some things you think would be interesting for new collectors to know because you guys have been around for a while you've seen a lot of iterations of marvel card collecting and character collecting what are some things in the back of your head that you think have been pretty fascinating to see after all these years you know what i mean things that are just i don't know you're kind of still like, you know, I remember this. I remember this. Yeah, well, uh, one thing uh, is uh, there's too many Wolverine collectors out there. <laughs> and y'all need to back off. I agree. You guys need new hobbies. Pick a different character. <laughs> and Justin Underwood, stay away from Rogue. Yeah, what's his problem, by the way? <laughs> yeah, I told you once. I'm going to tell you again. Stay away from Rogue. Um. I, I, you know, what's just the quality of, of uh, some of these sketch cards coming out? I mean, what some of these artists are doing compared to what was being done and when, it, when it first started? Yeah, to, mid, mid 2006, 7, I think 8. 2006 was the first. I mean, I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, I do wish, however, when a set comes out that's a premium set. That there are premium sketch cards in that because i've noticed that upper deck gets to the point where they will just fill their quota on what they need right now i understand that sometimes maybe artists aren't available or you know they kind of have have to do what they have you know do with what they have but it should be premium art if it's in like a black diamond set but, or yeah. a, you know yeah any premium high price quality set yeah. should have high quality sketch cards. Yeah. It should Not be beloved. Quick little portrait it should be, shot. Yeah. yeah. And another thing too is the uh, uh Especially I, this so is rare. one thing I yes, think agreed. popping over my head. Yeah, rarity is one thing, but like upper deck seems to be 
like some of their sets like look at uh platinum that just came out what they say just over 100 sketch cards in barely. it barely barely like the people who were drawing uh the, the base art like sinkovich and 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 ron uh, sinkovich miles i have the list somewhere but it's like nine people basically you yeah, see, and uh, but that's like super rare now. I liked it when Rittenhouse was doing one a box. It, at least you're guaranteeing to get some original art in there. Um, but the scarcity, and the thing is, it kind of worries me because the scarcity of sketch cards mean they're either pulling back on on sketch cards, which means future sets are going to have same thing, less a sketch card a case, mm, which is going to have you know people scrambling to get work. Everybody's going to be fighting to get on these sets. You know, um, I think I think a major problem with the future of sketch cards, and then this is this is a great little segue here, and I and I won't be long on this. I just want to give a little context. Right now, there's a lot of people who collected sketch cards back in the day. Not this company here, not people I know about. I'm not talking about anybody specific, but a lot of people kept these sketch cards to themselves. Flea Ultra, Spider Man, MCC ninety eight, Silver Age completely hidden from the world mm -hmm. for good reason. But the problem is now is that, and this is going to sound rough, but I'm going to be honest, the quality, like people don't understand what they're looking at when they look at sketch cards because the really good stuff doesn't see the light of day. And Lane and Tony know what I'm talking about. It just doesn't for good reason, but it's a double edged sword. And I think what the people don't understand is that, you had sketch cards being done by people who created these characters, who had worked on these characters, people who had influence over these characters or did iterations of these characters. And then what happened was in 07 and really complete Avengers and all this other stuff, all of a sudden you had people who were artists coming in and doing their interpretation of the Marvel superheroes. And it was awesome because then you got all these different types, Katie Cook, Tony Perna, Warren Martin, you know, you had all these amazing yes tone right just amazing renditions of characters that you normally would not see and they were super creative right andy price like you had these cartoon versions like you had these great variety yeah and then gone the variety's gone because of uh marvel not wanting to have their characters appear in ways that they haven't pre-approved so they got rid of it mm -hmm. and then it became very restrictive which again, that was a big downfall. And the same thing was happening in Star Wars. Couldn't be drawn. <clears throat> Favorite characters of people. Of Fantastic Four costumes. characters, Apocalypse Rose, and Gambit for the yeah. longest time. For the long guns couldn't be shown. And, and I'm not a huge believer in guns at all, but some characters Some characters have guns like Bishop, Cable, Domino, Mystique. everybody. <laughs> When's the last time you saw Mystique with a with a with side yeah. with a sidearm? And Mystique yeah. is giant guns that didn't look real <laughs> and that was the, that was that was the good part is that like it was meant to be comic book we understood that but awesome. all these restrictions and all these things kind of stopped allowing artists to be really kind of super creative um because they were they were doing things and now they're so restricted and now the people who are given this job to do sketch artists have never been paid well at all they've always been screwed out of money because truthfully you guys don't understand this, maybe some new people here, but sketch cards made Marvel cards. It's not the other way around. Marvel cards were around before sketch cards in 97, but when sketch cards came out, that was ingenious. It because because it was, yeah. it's one of it a was kind. A it's thing, not yeah. a mass produced. It's the thing. It was the yeah. one of a kind. Yeah. One of a kind That's card. I, it. I mean, it's a pack pulled card from an artist. Mm -hmm. It's original art from a pack of cards. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't stress how cool that is. And I promise it's this very is very cool. It's very cool. <laughs> um, and people don't really understand that now because what we get is very painted, very heavy acrylic, very layered cards, which are stunning and seem impossible to, that they even exist because they're so beautiful. But what ends up happening is that. The price point changes, you know what I mean? And then expectations change. And then all of a sudden being someone who pulled a card from an artist they didn't know, and all of a sudden they fall in love with this rendition of a character, of their mm -hmm. character that they've never seen before. And now they're like, I want to go get an AP. Exactly. That whole ecosystem. Yep. yep. That's what I do when I see cards that I like online. I'll watch other people's pulls. 
and I'll say, oh, this artist did sketch cards on this set. So I'll go try to find them on Facebook or Instagram and ask them, do you have any APs available? <laughs> That's how I get most of my APs. That's the way to do it though. And I think, I think that process is lost now because like what Tony was saying with the limited nature of them, yeah. um, it's almost impossible to do that now. And now artists have to wait for approval and all this other kind of horribleness. Years sometimes. Yeah. Years, which is so dumb. It doesn't make any sense at all that that should be the case. No. Um, it's done very wrong, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. So, and I want to leave this in here. We're at 50 minutes and I want to make sure we have time for this. Plus, Tony wants to ask me something <laughs> at the end that I'm a little afraid of. So... Uh -oh. Wait, do you want let's, let's do mine now, really quick, and then oh my be God. gentle. I'm Pretty trying sweet. to make sure this show is family friendly. No, 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 no it's no, nothing bad. He's the okay. bad one. It's nothing bad. <laughs> Congratulations on your book. What book? You this man's driven me crazy for two weeks. What book are you talking about? I got a sneak peek of your book. Riding the Wave by Fausto Bernardino. What is that? It's a book. It's it's your book because you're, it's on, a book. you're obviously on the back. So. What did you two do? <laughs> it's a book. <laughs> what did you two do? I, I some of the hold on some of the chapters are very interesting. Um, this is a made up book. I have not written a book. You wrote yeah. You wrote this book. Mm -hmm. I did. Tony wrote this book. I introduction. Right. Introduction. Yeah. introduction. <clears throat> I am Norman. <laughs> I am Norman Rad. Mm -hmm. uh, some chapters like Zen La La La. That was me. The Devourer of Finances. That's a great topic on when or you should you sh and when when you should and should not buy a home. Go on. I'm sorry. A fantastic discovery. I'm a herald. You're that was herald. puberty. That was my chapter on puberty. Go on. I'm a herald, you're a herald. To me, my cards. <laughs> the, the blind helps me to see. A cosmic journey. And this one I like. This is one of my favorite chapters. The Iceman Cometh. <laughs> this is an expensive joke. You know that, right, Tony? This is this is this is an expensive bit <laughs> that you've gone it's out of your way to do this. It's the glossary. It's really it's real. Who wrote oh, this? You did. This is right here. That's that's your name, right? That's that's your photo, is it not? It's your book. That's that's you, right? <laughs> you put a cure. You have a happy. All right, now, now open it wait, the who's the publishing wait, house, wait, Tony? Wait, wait. wait. Uh, to slab or not to slab, my fellow collectors, meet the creators, that's my PC, a new beginning, and then the index. Fine, I'll show this is so hand. sad. <laughs> this is so sad because this is not far off from what I would do. And that's exactly <laughs> what I would want my index to look Real like. <laughs> Available at Barnes and & Noble and Amazon. Uh, and chapters. And chapters and what did over. you do? <laughs> Riding the Silver Wave. Did you have to like queue up your like Windows 98 to get the Silver Wave font style? Because that was amazing. That looks like you made it in Corel Paint. No, I actually did it in Photoshop uh, CS9, whatever the newest one is. So you did do it. I just tricked you. Come on, man. <laughs> no, look. Yeah, I did. It's a. This is. It's really a. a send it to me. Movies. Because I. Please send <laughs> that to me and sign it. I want you both to sign it, and I need that. But the index isn't actually, yeah, I actually had to do the fake index for your. Oh, my God. Please send that to me. I want that so bad. <laughs> I can't believe you got my picture and you put on it. That's a, yeah. What publishing house did you write on there? Oh, well, actually, just says it's uh, it's runes for uh, PS Publishing, so Perna Studios Publishing. <laughs> and if you look on the side, because I actually got you on the spine as well. On, you really did. A, <laughs> you made me a book. This is amazing. <laughs> you sick man. I love this. I'm going to treasure that forever. He can That's see amazing. Really weird ideas. I have no idea how he gets them, but he loves to. I did it last night. I was cracking up. Gag Dude, gag he's been. <laughs> this is what he does with his free time when he's not drawing. <laughs> it's a this wonderful. is like the best thing ever. This is amazing. The index is dead on, by really the way. That is not far off from what I would have done. So that's pretty great. 
All right, let's talk about Perna Studios. <laughs> you know what I... talked about the published book we just did. I'm going to make an Instagram post, and I'm going to put the book there, and I'm going to take an author photo. I'm going to fake a reading. I'm going to, like, make... I'm gonna, I'm gonna excited. I know I'm going to do a whole thing. This is going to be great. I can't... I'm ruining the joke, but it's going to be great. Oh, that'd be awesome, though. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm going to look... I'm going to be in a bookstore randomly, and I'm going to stand up and do the... I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm, it's, this is going to be good. This is going to be a running joke. I love it so much. Oh, you sign, your book? sign your book. Sign your book. To sign my book. Sign my book. I don't think I'll ever have a merch store, but it will be there. <laughs> you know what? Uh, OAX next year. You can always just, you just gotta hand them out. Be like, so yeah, I wrote. Show you one more thing too. There's Please. A giant box. It's all rogue chase cards. Like giant box, and then I got. Two more boxes of chase cards and the big box of base cards. Yes. <laughs> Show awesome. me. Oh I my mean, gosh. Okay, wait. I have a good question for you then, Elaine. <laughs> and you don't have. I know this is a this is a tough question, but what's one of your favorite rogues you've ever seen in a '90s Marvel card? I you saw it on top, and I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. But my absolute favorite is the one where she's flying and she's throwing off her leather jacket. I went back in the early 2000s. I think I commissioned a few people to do like reproduction pieces. Like I had one do it like an animation cell because it was my favorite. It was one of my favorite rogues. And then um, I had the Hillbrint one with the space shuttle. Had a couple of people redo it, but like as animation cells and stuff like that. So they're my two favorite rogues. That's (laughs) good. (laughs) That's actually pretty amazing. That's actually really great. I love Julie and, Bell's. And really I collect stupid. really rare things too: food premiums, stickers, pins, anything with Rogue on it. I even have like back in the day on eBay, there was a seller who was they took a a base set and they did a diamond edition. So they took one of every card, stamped a silver diamond edition, sold them as one of a kinds on ebay bought this like years and years and years ago never seen anything like it i think just somebody i don't think it was authentic but it does come with a certificate so i'm not too sure (laughs) how rare this is cool to have (laughs) you gotta send me a picture of it okay there's a surfer i'm so mad at you i wasn't kidding elaine I'm not kidding. Elaine and Tony are definitely my mentors through character collecting. People don't know that. And I, and I, I don't say it often because, you know, people think that's kind of weird unless they understand the context, but it is true. Elaine's row collection is. I had more fun character collecting than I did um, going after complete base sets and promo cards. I used to do that too, but I just thought character collecting was fun. Yeah. And I always had to have at least two of that card, one for the base set and then one for my personal collection. Yeah, I think my days of collecting entire base sets are gone. I think it's just the character. It's hard to do it yeah. now. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people are going to go down that road. And it's cool to see. Um, and it's cool to see the evolution of it for sure. And I'm just glad I was able, like you both, I was able to get a point with my collection where I'm like, if I had to stop, I'm happy with where I'm with what I have. Yeah, because I think, yeah. So, and 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 before we get to the perma stuff, I just a question that I did want to ask you because it's it's such a good topic and it's a it's a topic a lot of people are having now. Is that what kind of how do how do you get to that stage? How would you suggest to people they get to that moment where they build up a collection that's hard to put together and like and and no joke. Rogue and Wolverine are far more desirable characters than Surfer. So that is tough competition. Um, like really tough competition. I can t- I know that is. Any female character is a miserable trek for anyone. It wasn't that bad of tough competition in the beginning, but now. In the beginning, yeah. The more and more popular these characters become because of the movies and everything yeah. else, it's getting harder yeah. and more expensive to collect these characters. Yeah, the more mainstream card collecting became, I think it just it made it difficult for because now everybody, yeah, everybody wants the popular characters. But I would say, if you're a newbie starting out, uh, collect within your patience, means. Yeah, patience. Have don't patience. go all crazy. You don't have to have that super expensive card right away. Um, collect. You know, you you can probably get more. 
for that same amount that you want to spend, you could probably get a bunch of cards as opposed to the just one. Build your collection slowly. Again, what you can afford. Don't don't eat cat food. And have patience because sometimes a card may not appear in the secondary market for years. Yeah, years. I think last last year, I finally found a rogue card I've been looking for for the last fifteen years. I was just so happy to get it. I was just like, "Thank you! I finally found you." Yeah. <laughs> so there's only a few more from past sets, but have patience. <laughs> you know, and trading uh, again, and trading with mm -hmm. other people that might have you know you might have one of their cards, they might have one of yours, but don't don't be a dick about it either. Um. Don't don't start the well. This is worth this much, and yours is only worth that. Blah, blah blah. You know what? The person's being nice. If you want to pass, pass politely. So don't always. Yeah, don't be a poo poo about it. Because <laughs> no, and even if someone gives you a crazy, I this anyway. I just want to say real quick. Best advice you're ever getting in this channel just happened seconds ago. That is brilliant. That is stuff that I've had to learn, and that's basically two rules of thumb I live by, which is patience and training with the community. Exactly. Those are two amazing points. And just to reiterate what Tony just said, because I think it's a big deal, especially nowadays, someone gives you a crazy price for something you want. Don't make them feel like an a-hole and don't tell them low, don't give them the riot rack of why it's not worth it the much as it is. I just tell them I'm not interested at the time and I just thank them for their time. <laughs> that's what you do. Because you know what? Sometimes, when things are priced too high and they come to you, you just say, hey, it's not for me. I'm a buyer at this, but I can't do this. Or, mm -hmm. you know, ah, it's not the right time for me. But if it doesn't work out and you you do have to change your price eventually, and hopefully you don't, let right. me know. And I've had friendships with people, like, like Elaine finding that card after 15 years. That is not even, that doesn't even phase me because that's how rough yeah. Of, a, of a journey this thing is with collecting especially sketch cards and cards in particular but i like what you wrote in the back of your book here be kind to your fellow collectors the joy you get from collecting the joy you get from your collection is the same joy that they get from their collection yeah it's true it's, it's actually that's what, you, that's what you said words of wisdom I can't believe you made a prop book. I, I seriously. <laughs> this book is about my journey as a silver surfer collector. Oh my and God. It actually has a bio. I can't I believe have lots of cards. Lots and lots of, lot of, of cards. On this last night. <laughs> my collection is enormous. Learn about my humble beginnings and where it all started. Feel the joys and pains of my collecting. I'm going to start crying over here. I'm not that. the most prolific collector, but you'll read about the crimes and downfalls of my collecting experiences. Oh, you make me laugh too hard. Read about the traps in collecting and the financial burdens it may cause for you and your loved ones. I'm here to share my experiences with you, and I hope you get something useful out of it. Oh my gosh. I'm going to take so many author photos with that book. I'm no, not joking you. I'm going to do, oh, it's going to be great. Oh, I'm so I mad that that's so funny. <laughs> that's so stupid good. Oh my God. Okay. This is the funniest thing anyone's ever done for me, and and very nice. So I'm I'm actually very obsessed with this now. So <laughs> you got seven of I'm, I'm sure. actually going to see it with a bunch of books. <laughs> well, you're gonna, you know, you, I'm going to sell. No joke. I'm going to finish off the book. I'm going to actually write it, and that's going to be the cover, the index, and the back. I'm not joking. Nice. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a book on the collection, and that's what I'm going to use. Yes, real fine print. Yeah. Real, real fine print. Yeah. Real fine print. <laughs> stolen, not stolen from Tony Poner. <laughs> Everyone's cracking up in the chat. Uh, <laughs> not a fan of AI, but it would be perfect to write the book. Uh, this is amazing. Elaine's collection of real cars and over collections is all inspiring bangers and more bangers, including Tony's girls. It's so true. People who are in the know know. Um, and I'm so glad you guys were kind enough to, to share that stuff here. Um, I have to talk about this. I know you guys are shy and very humble, and I hate to put you on the spot, but I'm not shy. And, I'm not shy. And, <laughs> Elaine's the shy one. No. <laughs> Tony, Tony is shameless. Um, <laughs> yes. You need another right. binder. That's getting full. I put. I actually <laughs> designed that binder. It's really well done. Yeah, in Photoshop, I got a template from this site that makes the binders, and I was like, you know, what kind of? So I kind of pencil it out first, what I want, 
on a piece of paper and then I kind of throw it all together. I did the silhouettes of the, the monsters there. And I that. knew it. I was going to ask you. Yeah, he, he draws them, then he inks them, and he has me scan them and fill in any extra inks that need to be done. Yeah. It's yeah. so stupid good. I love I love that binder. I think it was a great I love, idea. I love the Halloween. Yeah. Elaine showed me. Elaine showed me that she had a Halloween binder. I was like, it was. I don't mean no. Poor Elaine. She like helped me with this set. Like she was such a. She's the best person in the world. She was. I, I guess I. If we had all the promos from the other past sets, there's like only two Halloween sets that I completely ran out of base sets and promos for. Yeah. There's it's so else. Halloween's popular. It's one of our, our popular, most popular sets. My favorite Halloween. I love horror macabre. I love all that stuff. Yeah. So Halloween. it was awesome. Um, so let's do something a little bit here. How did this start? How did the Perna Studio thing start? And I have some other questions for you, but give us a little bit of a background. Do you want to tell this one? Okay, quick uh quick rundown. I was doing sketch cards for these companies. Um right now. Written house, upper deck, tops. Uh, it wasn't that great. Uh, was getting a fan following. Uh, became friends with a lot of fellow artists. Uh, Elaine suggested, why don't we start our own company? Do our own sets. Because you had 10 APs. It was the first time you ever had 10 APs. Yeah, APs. yeah. So ten, <laughs> basically those 10 APs financed our first set. So what happened was she said we can either pay off our visa bill <laughs> or <laughs> and be I'm in serious, debt in I'm three serious. months from now. <laughs> and I'm serious. Or we can put the money into uh, you try, know getting cards done, paying artists. So we said, okay, let's let's, let's try it. Let's go for broke. So one of the, the problems was, you know, we're just we're two individuals. We don't have the money to buy a license. So he said, what about something non-licensed? And she suggested, what about mythology? Everybody knows mythology. Worldwide. You know, we could do a bunch of different ones. And we said, okay. So we contacted artists that we knew that were friends and everybody jumped on. You know, we had people like, we had uh, Katie Cook on our first set. We had... Uh, I think we had like... We had a lot of people. We had set. Bard. Bard was on our first Bard, set. crazy. We Axe, Axe was on our and... set. Champagne was on our set. I mean, mm -hmm. we had a lot of the very popular artists at that time. He knew a lot of artists from the Scoundrel Art Community Forum. Yeah, yeah, which I was friends with. So um, they agreed to do sketch cards for us. And we thought, you know what? Sketch card artists very rarely get to do base art. So we hired some of these artists to do base art for us as well. And they loved it because it was their mm -hmm. first published you know, piece of artwork in a set. <clears throat> so when we put it up for sale solicitations, it sold up what, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, we only made 550 sets. Yeah, because we were we were again we were doing this all all ourselves. Like we got the cards printed in in uh it was Versacolor. It was Texas, right? Yeah, Versacolor was the first company. So they were sending us, you know, the, the cards and Elaine would go through each one to take out any imperfections. I still any... do. I go through like 20, 30,000 cards. Uh, we know. We know because we see the quality when we get them. Like yeah. no, it's true. Like you're never you're never gonna see a better <laughs> composed. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no. I'll be like today. I'm going through four thousand cards, Tony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. So everything she she did that with everything the the metal cards, the pearl cards, the, the promo cards, the base cards. I mean, she went through everything, and she's very what I would have let through. Nope. <laughs> she does not let through. If you buy a new product, you're cards should be new they shouldn't be ding they shouldn't be damaged they yeah. shouldn't have stuff peeling off them you're listening upper deck they should be new <laughs> <laughs> so we overproduce but but that's a good thing and a bad thing we could never have numbered cards because um if we decided to get some cards like say number to 10 or 20 and then we get them in and a few of them are damaged do we insert the damaged cards yeah and then somebody pulls a rare numbered card but it's damaged. So the, it's, the only way I can think about getting around that is getting a bunch of that card that's supposedly going to be numbered, or the machine and hand, that actually and hand, numbers the hand write the number. On. That's what they did. I mean, that's what a lot of times people do. Is that yeah. and and really, it, it's people get a little shady. You guys yeah, won't, yeah. but like you shred the rest, you hand number the ones that are that come back the best quality, and you go on from there. Yeah. That's the way to do it. But what I will say is that I don't know. It would be cool, but you guys do such variety. I don't think people understand. You know, when you get 
break down for us because I want people to hear it. We want as many art styles as possible yeah. on our set. Everything yeah. from your cartoony and your cute to your almost comic style to your painted, painted portrait like, type. Like Fred Ian and Andre Toma are doing stuff for us. Yeah. This is like, this is Halloween season one. And this is a transparency ghost kind of like plexi card. And this is like one of the inserts. Yeah. And it is so stupid clean. And this is like one of the early ones. And then the base set and promos, like there's such variety on how to pull the set together. Even though you get a full set of the base, there's still promos you got to keep up with. There's the insert cards. I mean, it's not a difficult chase by any means. And it's not an expensive chase, but it does... Um, Give you something to kind of go for. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to be that. Yeah, we wanted to be excited. that company where we didn't want to hand everything to you. We did want a little bit of that chase, but we also want to make things uh, available to people that it'd be easier for them to get. Because you know, there have been some people that have just been disappointed. Where you know, if they can't get all the promos, they get they get angry. Yes. You know, that's you know, happened they want, in the past. Want, You know, <laughs> but we want all your cards. You know, so. I, I don't think people understand too. Like a lot of this stuff is so well done, and it's very fun to collect. And um, again, a lot of variety. So when you go ahead and you make this stuff, and you get into this, you make these sketch cards. You guys have been kind of infamous in the sense that these sets are done very well uh, in terms of like what you decide to put in them, the artists you get, the variety of things. Um, I don't think people realize how cool that is. I'm trying to get you guys a good look at this binder so you guys can have it there because uh, I do think it's worth taking a look at these cards. But So this is the Halloween set, and you just get all these really cool different cards from a bunch of different artists. They're really fun, really thematic. Oh, really? These show up really nice on the white. Some crazy art. Oh, that guy, that guy must have been sexy. <laughs> must have been sexy. I love it. I think it's great. I love um, this stuff. Love I think it's fun. But I'll show you guys some of the stuff that's... They came out with these metal cards as well, which is yep. pretty cool. Oh, Dan Brereton. Yeah, Dan Brereton. <laughs> Major artist. Yep. Look at that. And that's if we can afford them, we will try to get them on our sets. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, Dan was a super guy. Dan oh, Burton. Super I mean, he's nice, super yeah. nice. When I approached him, I about... just met him. Yeah. Oh, at OAX? Yeah, he was, dude, I loved his work for I got a surfer sketch card by him. He was so nice. Oh, that show. <laughs> Maybe we will. Oh, you, you probably do have them all for the Halloween then. Because I, I see a couple of those that are completely gone. I've been gone for yeah. years. <laughs> it took a while. And some people in the – there's a Facebook Perna group, if you don't know. Um, they're fantastic people. My fave. Somebody my fave. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my mind when I saw her and him. I know. I wish I could have bought that witch – because when we hire the artist for base art, we don't keep the base art. We just want a scan of it, and we let the artist keep all their original art. They can sell their. Did original you get art. the? Yeah, you got the creatures of myth and legend, right? Yes. You yes, did. they're right here. Can you find the? Did you get the promo card of the Yeti? No, he was. Um, he's a metal, Tony. Oh, he was a metal. Did you get the metal of Yeti? Was. I don't think. Oh. I don't. <laughs> Dan Brereton. <laughs> I don't think he got the medal on the ice saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody else saw it. <laughs> I don't I didn't oh, see it, God. so I think I might have to send one to Nolan. <laughs> no, you don't have to send me. i you guys have already been I way too much. Well, well I just want to I wanted to say that I actually bought the original art of the Yeti from, from Dan last Did year. you really? I want to see a picture of that when you get it. Yeah, I asked him if he still had it. Oh. And, he, says, and yeah. he did. That's crazy. And I says, uh, can I buy it off you? And he says, okay. Oh, I love that. Oh, Megan, when when she would do the art for the lenticulars, so it's yeah. always fantastic. That one broke my heart. I, I like, would oh, I would, so I would, tell Megan what I want, and then she would come up with something perfect like that. She killed this. Yeah. Like, she absolutely – She. I, I, I'm putting down my camera because I can't, like, damage the card. <laughs> putting it back into the into the sleeve. But she – I mean, it's, it's the best. And, like – 
it's what breaks my heart when I see Upper Deck do stuff or anybody do stuff. And I'm like, come on. Like, like you guys, you guys always put out really clean work and the cards are awesome. And this is not the only type of set. So what are some of the other ones um, you do? Uh, classic, classic mythology. We've done yes. classic mythology, classic fairy tales, um, spellcasters, creatures of myth and legends. Halloween, Elementals. Elementals, Halloween. Oh, I love that one. Is that is that PJ Katakutin? Who was that? It was PJ. Yeah. yeah, that was a really cool one. I like that one a lot. <laughs> I know my artist. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, when we get the, the sketch cards in hand. I go through them quite a lot. I just yeah. look at everybody's cards well, a lot. Well, yeah, when we have them in hand, we're like, oh that my God, was, I don't want to give these out. That oh. one was hard to part with, but I know Norn wanted it. <laughs> if you ever need it back or you regret it, you tell me you have it back. Oh, I know. It's in a great home. It's always, great always, home. always and forever. You never have to and worry about super that. super hard to get an AP from uh, Eureka Shiru. Oh, and trust me. She's one of my favorites, and I would love to see a surfer. But oh I, I just that would be amazing. Like surfer and Nova, she freaking kill. That would be wonderful. I know. I would oh, love yeah, that. In Halloween, we do our black and white series every couple of years. Can you imagine her doing that in like one of those five, I actually like the, I like the black and white series. I love cool. the black and whites. I have a lot of them. Yeah. Um well, I have a lot of them. They're really great. So much more in the art. Oh, oh that's the FX. Yeah. 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 Stupid nice. I, I love this binder. Um, very awesome. lucky to have it. Very lucky to have it. So that's how witches take baths. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's where that went. I thought I heard somebody ratting on my door the other night. I'm trying to get in. It wasn't me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, but I want people to know. Because people look at these cards and people look at Marvel cards and people look at DC and Pokemon magic and all this stuff. And for me, this is kind of like one of those places where it's like, oh, there's a restaurant hole in the wall somewhere. You should go eat there. It has the best food in the city. And Perna Studios is that for me. That's the place where I'm like, that's going to be quality always. And that's how that's and I, I that's not to make you blush. We've been friends for a long time. There's no reason for me to like blow smoke, you know, Um I've always been a big believer that. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, honestly, and I think collectors who know, collectors who know, know. And I think I think it's really cool. But I don't know. It was fun. I've been wanting to have you guys on here for a while. Both of you are character collectors. Both of you have been mentors of mine. I've looked at your collections to base my collection on. And it's just a happy coincidence you also print the studios and all this other great stuff. So I'm just really grateful you guys came on and, and shared. And I appreciate well, thank it. Thank you for having us. And yeah, the, the Perna Studios thing, it's, it was a great outlet for us to, to be more creative on our end instead of just doing sketch cards for a company, uh, kind of being on the other side of the business, business now and seeing how things work, you know, artists being late, uh, printing problems. I mean, we have to deal with all of that, but, you know, it's, it's it part happens, of the game. It happens with every car company. Yeah. <laughs> we, but I like, yeah. I was going to say, we envision ourselves, like how you were saying that you got, you know, upper deck in that and could do a little hole in the wall. We consider ourselves kind of like the little mom, pa business in the corner there where people <laughs> like to go there all the time. They can, it's reliable. The food's there. And it, it's, it's just it's, as Norton was saying. Yeah. yeah. It's real. It's true though. Like, honestly, it feels that way. I've restricted myself to the Halloween stuff because I'll do everything. So I'd like witchcraft, Halloween and creatures. And I've been like, okay. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait uh, until it happens again. But like, and I, I want people to know about this stuff because I see people getting frustrated and everyone's always going to collect Marvel and Star Wars and DC. And I think that's wonderful and they should. Um, but I think it's good if you're a card collector in your heart, you know what I mean? Like some people are just card collectors. You know what I mean? They just love cards. They love the medium. They love the, the everything about that aesthetic something to take a look at if you don't know there's a group on facebook these are the lovely people you need to contact if you're ever interested and i think they have the right system for it and i think it's the right size the amount of base cards the inserts i just think it works out really well yeah the formula um, been well for us so we're not going to change it at all i think it's smart i think it's i think it's the way to go hey pretty sketch how you sell how do you collect sketch cards Ooh, let's do that question as a way let's 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 keep going because that's good I steal them. <laughs> he knows all the artists. He just goes to the house. He's like, oh, you're working on something? That's cool. Yep, pretty much. 
Tony, that's good. Tony that's good. doesn't have too many sketch cards. Usually the sketch cards he gets are more like commissions for at conventions, artists he really likes, he really admires. Yeah, like I've got a, I've got a Toma Wolverine uh, sketch card. Um, and then cards here and there. Um, yeah, mostly she's the... the I'm the sketch collector, yeah. but if I see a nice good Wolverine once in a while, I'll try to trade or buy it and I'll, I'll give it to him. And he's like, oh, this is really cool. Yeah, I usually just collect like various diseases or something. <laughs> he thinks it's a base card at first. I'm like, no, Malari it's a sketch card. <laughs> Malaria one day. Like, Malaria. You know. yeah. The real fun stuff though, not the cheap stuff. You know what I mean? The stuff that that's hard to get. You know what I mean? Not like, oh, I'm not going to go get this disease because everybody has it. I'm going to make sure I get the crazy ones. I get like, that. Leprosy? Anybody got leprosy? No. No, not that I know of. But Tony, he's got it locked down, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Locked That's it. Down. That's it. No, but That's uh, actually really good. That's okay, really good. I, I can't sleep Yeah, again. and she's, she's definitely more of the, the collector. Again, I would probably lean more towards the, the actual base uh, cards and, and, and variants and whatnot. Um. I've had stuff sent to me, like sketches, which, you know, I cherish. I don't, I don't give them away or anything. They're in my collection. Anything sent to me, I always keep. Yeah. You know, that's smart. Tony saves more of his money and I spend more of his money. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's the key to a happy relationship right there. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm fine with it. As long as she's happy. Then I'm happy. I'll it's be a like, good life. Tony, I just bought a rogue sketch card. How much was it? You don't want to know. That's not bad. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's so Emily and I, she's like, I'm like, oh man, I just got a surfer sketch card. I love it. She goes, oh yeah. How much was it? And uh, I'm like, it's like 50 bucks. She goes, no, what's the real number? I'm well, it's like 70. No, no, no. What's the real number? I was like, okay, it was 110. That's not bad. I know. Oh, right? That always, <laughs> that's the conversation. I, just, I, just, I thought you were going to say, well, 50 and 70 is 120. That's what I just told you. I just told you. I just told you the exact amount. What are you talking about? Just look at the bank account. Imagine it as zero and you'll but know the amount. That's yes, that is our first question. How much was it? <laughs> but yeah. he does the same thing to me yeah. because between me buying rocks, crystals, trading cards, sketch cards, he doesn't know how much we have anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ignorance is I'm bliss, man. Like, no, work at my desk. Don't, don't buy that yet. <laughs> I just draw. I spent all the money. I just <laughs> draw. That's it. That's all for me. No. Well, I just want to say thank you both. You both are lovely people. Some of my favorite people. Thank and I'm you. so glad you are some of our favorite people too. You guys are awesome. Um, this is fantastic. Thank you all so much. So many people are here watching. I'm I so glad. Many people are here. There's like 30 here right now. You guys are so lovely. Uh <laughs> Wait, Everyone's so typhoid having a Mary and chicken pox. I collect typhoid Mary cards too. I collect <laughs> I collect all female cards. So I have a huge box, all Jean Grey cards. One's all storm, one's typhoid Mary, one's domino, one's Emma Frost, one's Scarlet Witch. Yeah, she's a cuckoo. <laughs> I collect all the female characters. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, man. I, I that's like storage boxes, and each one will just say the name of a, a character, Black Widow, yeah. Rogue <laughs> Storm. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. Right <laughs> That's impressive because like between both of you, like female characters that are like, those are all big names in my mind. Typhoid Mary, people don't think, oh, that's not a big character. Sketch card wise, she is awesome. She has a great aesthetic. Yeah. She was actually very relevant to Daredevil storylines. Yeah. You know? I, I love drawing big. her when she had the crazy, like the, the porn roll. Yeah. And she had like the coolest hair. You she know, everybody awesome. else's hair was just like, and she she came know. out of hackers you know what i mean she came out of the movie hackers was awesome yeah. like you know yeah, her right, yeah, like very mnemonic like she had that 80s tech kind of like pop i don't she know I, I just cool so so i, I like i always like the obscure ones like deathbird and typhoid mary stuff that a lot of, a lot of people were collecting at the time snowbird There's well you know it's funny you're gonna you're gonna laugh but deathbird oh did I do that for you too? Was I smart enough to do that? He's my bad girl persona. Did I? <laughs> did I do that for you? I did do that for you because I'm a good person. Oh, no. you, you didn't get me <laughs> nothing. I'm so afraid. Oh my goodness! Oh, thank you, thank you, Pasto. <laughs> I would also like to thank you. 
once you give me something. Uh, I'm going to have to put that in one of the the magnetic ones so I can actually put it on my bookshelf because I have a few trading cards on my bookshelf in little magnetic cases that I like to display. Yeah, Tony. <laughs> All right, Tony. Oh, I'm God. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's not. You don't understand. Don't kid because I have things here for you, but I'm afraid to show them because people are going to be mad. It's tough, man. Don't worry about it. I'm going to send you pictures. I don't want you to get in any sort of trouble. I don't. I, yeah, because I, I put stuff. To, I, that, anyway, people are okay with this because that's that. But. I'll sh I'll show you. Like you got to push, you you push your book. You really do. And I get you're, my you're gonna laugh when you see breakaway. It. You're gonna oh, laugh. Yeah. Sports breakaway. cards established in 2013. <laughs> 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 oh, um, card box. Is that where you just bought the the X Men Avengers Legion? I did. Alliance or Alliance or Ali Legion? Yeah, this is where I pulled that Colossus card. Oh yeah, the sketch the card. Colossus sketch card that Bye. nobody wants to buy. Matthias. Oh. oh, you don't see bold really Colossus like a lot. That's cool. Who did that? Matthias Streb. Matthias Matthias Streb. Strep? Yep. Strep's a big one. That's yeah, crazy. I, like, I love the shading of that. Yeah, I tried like... to. I tried to. Uh, oh, look, Yuko's on here. Yuko. Yuko. <gasps> Yuko. Oh, Yuko's bad. Oh my god, Yuko's I love this great. stuff too. I'm always you, following him. I stalk him on Instagram and Facebook. Yuko's awesome. I oh, he did a search for me. That's insane. I think he's one of the first people I, I probably commissioned back in the day on Scoundrel. Yeah. He, I mean, people don't know. Like, pff, I love his style too because it was one of those styles that like really stuck out. Like when you, you yeah, know what I mean. He, yeah. he has perspectives, like awesome perspectives. Oh, I love his perspectives on stuff. The it's, angles. It's the, never just straight oh, on. It's so cool. Yeah. It's so cool. It's always and it's always very creative. Like I feel like I never see the same Yuko sketch twice. You know what I mean? It's always different. Always has something extra to it. I don't know. I always appreciate that. It's, okay, so amazing. We're coming out an hour and thirty. I don't want to keep you guys forever because I've already <laughs> taken so much of your time. You are all so yeah, wonderful. We're having fun. So it's. Do you want us to come over? <laughs> I'll over. Just come next door. Just be right over here. We'll get late night Taco Bell and hang out. I'm down. <laughs> you can help teleport us. <laughs> I wish. Um, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Everybody's awesome. Thank you so much. This is a sketch card episode. Yeah, Tony and Elaine Perna. <laughs> Perna Studios, they rock. This was awesome. This was the most fun. Hope you got to see a little bit of a glimpse into the past for Marvel card collecting and the elusive sketch cards of the past as well, which are difficult to find. But also meeting two great people who have a great studio who work on brilliant cards and have such a history in Marvel cards already. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you all soon. Thank Bye, you. my friends.